ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, Delmo Records proudly presents to you Power, Power Child! riding a huge and incredible wave and it's simple signs that the biggest waves crash the hardest. What like instrument do you play in Power Charge? Drums. What instrument Drums. do you play? Drums. Nighty, tell us about Power Charge. We're fucking sick. What do you play? Guitar. Oh. It started good, but it ended very badly. Brendan Fisher and James Woodbury were in a group called Musical Revolution. James was the singer, Brendan was the drummer. Rage Against the Machine covers at lunchtime, that kind of thing. And I saw them, I saw Brendan drums, and I, th I thought, that guy is not a drummer. So I, I thought, start a band. Brendan on guitar, me drum, James sing. We practiced a couple of times here and there, and the music teacher comes in and says, scientists to modern music are playing a huge show, the city hall. There's gonna be 1,500 people there. Would you guys like to open the show? You sound so good. And we were like, yep. I think we can bring them on. Shall we bring them on, Oz? Absolutely. From Clarence High, can we get a bit of a shout out for Margaret The funny thing about that gig actually is the guitarist Brendan got kicked out almost as soon as we finished playing uh, because he was found with a goon bag and uh, kicked straight out for having that. The rest of us stayed and partied and we all made love to a lot of beautiful women that night. Yeah, one of my first bands, Squealer. Woke up this morning, I went right back. I remember the first gig we played. Small crowd, only a couple of hundred, but um, but they were into it. They were into it, and that's when I knew that I was going to play music for the rest of my life. Yeah, so my first time playing in front of people would have been Sorel Palooza 2007. <laughs> I 
think we were about 15, 16 at the time. And it was just a big night. It was crazy. Um, I mean, I don't know what I can really say. The statute of limitations. You know, I don't. I don't, I don't think that time's passed yet. Go for me. Watch out! Watch out! I thought, geez, these things were cool. Like, you know, they were pointy, loud, sounded aggressive. Um, kind of took it, don't take it very seriously, you know, learned like, it to and stuff, and I was like, you know, turn a little bit. Stroke of Ace were huge. Man, to be honest, I really don't fucking remember much of those times. Me and um, Dave, the drummer, had been friends for, for quite some time and we thought, let's have a jam. Why not two musicians working together? Just rocked out. Adam and uh, Alex Maloney were pissed off because we had a grunge as Tasmania. So they thought, oh, we're going to make a grunge band. And then we thought, hey, they'll get me to play guitar. So I was like, yeah, I'll play guitar. Then uh, I believe we all met Spiro, the singer and guitarist, uh, at a party. And um, we just, we just kind of clicked. Yeah, I've been playing guitar for about two years. I mean bass, <laughs> I mean guitar, I mean bass guitar. I've been playing bass for about two years. And have you always been this bad? You know what, fuck this, I'm leaving. Fuck you both. Hey, no, no, it's, oh, a, hey, no, it's a joke. Oh, no. We no. could just get a bass machine. We got our first show because another band that was playing actually dropped out. And oh, so they, they were friends with us, so we kind of did a bit of swappies and uh, cult swappies for sure. Oh, and um, and we and we play. So are you guys playing now or what? Yeah. But no one's in yet. Look at the, the fans, the flurry of the fans. We were the only band that didn't have the lights on for us, they didn't even announce us. Pretty sure they didn't want us to be playing. It was fun. I learned how crazy Spiro was. Um, yeah, he jumped on top of a speaker stack to about four people watching us. singer's guitar, Spiro, his, uh, his guitar broke. Uh, the name came to, it, came to me in a, uh, it was in a shaman-like vision. You see, uh, we're all, we're all, oh, we're all in our own houses and uh, just, we each had our mobiles on a speed dial and it just, it just came to me in a vision and I thought, power child, that's, I could see it up in lights. So I, um, 
sent them all a sent them all a text in. Uh, they just agreed. They said it's perfect. I'm pretty pretty sure he did not give us an option. It was his power shot or nothing. It came from um, Outshine by Soundgarden. We went into the studio with Trenton Smith. He mixed it. We put it up on MySpace. Instantly, thousands of listens. The next gig after that, Rosny Stock. It was a small small little show before we started playing it and thousands, thousands turned up to witness, to witness uh, Power Child. A great track there and you, that one's one of the ones I thought, you know, you could definitely hear the Soundgarden influence coming through there. Yeah. Um, more so than in the next song. But um, who was it that um, wrote that previous one, Big Sky? Um, I did. I was sitting in my undies on my bedroom floor with an acoustic guitar and I kind of just came up with it. Yeah. Yeah. So just one of those random kind of things? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, the next song is called Heat, but we'd better give you a quick warning because there's some coarse language in here. Insane. We were wildly out of tune. They didn't give an S. Spiro smashed his guitar at the end. Trolls had to come out and close the night off after us and uh, they came out in bare feet and stood all over guitar splinters One, two, three, four. and they were not happy. They said some nasty things about us to the press. I put it down to professional jealousy more than anything. I don't fucking remember that at all. So we released those tracks that we recorded with Trent Smith. Um, I think we put out a thousand, sold out. We did another second run of a thousand, sold out within a week. We did another two thousand, that sold out. It was just impossible to get in stores. Impossible. I'd recorded the year before with Margaret Spread uh, at this little home recording studio that this accountant named uh, Anthony Rochester had set up. It was called the Winter Palace. And Anthony uh, and the Winter Palace, they were offering this new new event, sort of live event thing, live at the Winter Palace. You can't 
come in, you play a set to a small audience in the studio. He records it and it's broadcast on Hobart Radio. And we thought that's a great idea. And we actually got named um, in many lists of the best gig of the year. Unfortunately, it was really out of tune, but that was our way. People didn't seem to mind. We were really starting to blow up with those first few tours. Um, didn't make any money from it though. It all got pissed up the wall or shit down the sink. Sorry, I should clarify our tool manager, Gilbo. He just had an affinity for shitting in sinks and how much it ended up costing us in cleaning bills. We barely made a cent. So after we, we got a bit of attention for that Winter Palace set and the broadcast, a lot of people heard it, and a lot of important people heard it, we got named in the Best of Rock 2008 in Rolling Stone, and that was huge. I mean, after that, the, the offers flooded in. Magic Dirt were touring for their latest album called Girl, and they'd seen us through Rolling Stone, and they decided to take us on the road with them. Adelita herself came out and filmed a bit of it and she said she was sending that to to some of her contacts in the labels industry. So How's it going Nighty? Good. How are you feeling before the magic gig? Hey? Uh, hungry. How are you feeling before the magic gig? Just touched it. Just touched it. Touched it. Touched it. I touched four things. And <laughs> touched this thing. No one else touched it. He's actually looking in their stuff. Are you really? I just want to see the guitar. Is that magic dirt? <laughs> this is pretty sad. It's gonna be before you get charged for right. Yeah. Drunk, so I can't really remember. So, oh, Kurt, a little bit drunk. Should hear what they. Oh, I was just the other day. Bit drunk. Should hear. Bit what? drunk. Had some. Had some alcohol. Therefore, was drunk. And you had the drug culture, you know, that ninety, you know, that he brought across from Stroke of Ace. It was, it was really hard on all of us. It was awful. You could see from our skin that we would, we were taking lots of heroin. That's why we got fat and pimply. That's what happens when you constantly inject needle. Yeah, things were wild back in the days. We used to party very hard, too hard, I'd say. That's when we started to get a bad reputation for being too awesome and rock and roll. Man, fuck. I don't really remember much of that, hey? Yeah, not sure. And then Jimmy Hendrix is like, I don't even play my, I play with my fucking yeah. time. Two times. No, this is Jimmy Hendrix, so. 
We have to watch some Hendrix. And he just like whacks it with his elbow going. I fucking hate my hands. I hate my hands. We have Hendrix DVD. Spiro left the band. I think a lot of the attention that he had to soak up as the frontman and the singer, also the, the main songwriter, was too much for him to handle. I mean, the attention all at once, it happened so fast. It's not like a gradual thing you can get used to, just bam. And I think that um, that all got to him and he, he had to leave. You know, it was, it was hard. Um, you know, that sort of attention, the being in that sort of a band brings you. I couldn't even leave a, a Coke bottle somewhere without some hot chick trying to drink the backwash. It was horrible. It was awful. Yeah, my memory, I can't remember that. It must have been maggot from injecting. We've got some special intruders. <laughs> um, I've been talking to Dave on a night about Spiro and he's just really getting on my nerves. <gasps> Look, I don't know about... Why don't you take the city's car? I don't know about the one point, but I know how I'll be giving the three points too. <laughs> 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 those gigs coming up with the fumes, the opening slots. So we had to get someone, we had to get them fast. So Sterling, we knew him through a friendship with another local band, High Break. Now High Break hadn't had the kind of success that we'd had, so once we asked him to come aboard our ship, he didn't hesitate to say yes. I mean, that was a huge step up for him. And um, we brought along Tim from High Break. It was sort of a double package deal. Stuff off. Sorry, it's more that I wanted to hear in the toilet, it's fine. What, the country music or...? Uh... <laughs> no, there was a guy and a girl in the toilet oh, next Lordy. to me and they were having a conversation and oh, someone may have been vomiting. Really? What toilet? Oh, it's a female toilet. She was good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You might want to check it out, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's only a bit of vomit. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of shit in there. So I can hear you. I hate German skin. Do you? Yeah, that's much of it. But you do the awesome. You do the awesome, the most best. You do the best part. Doom. 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 I mean, it goes for ages, you fuck. <laughs> Yesterday, it went for. That's what it's supposed to be. Yeah, it's no, meant to go for ages. It's called jamming, mate. Get used to it. Didn't you do it? Didn't you jam in high break? No. All those structures and stuff. Well, get a new rule book. <laughs> Throw your old one out the window. That's James's car. We're following it. He's the guy that's supposed to get us big. And if he doesn't, we'll kneecap him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I actually got that on film, Naughty. Oh, fuck, man. <laughs> <laughs> we went into a, um, a, a studio in Launceston, which was just, it was basically, it was a guy's house. We uh, pimped it out as if it were a studio, and it was done in two parts. Um, we did all the instruments and stuff at this place, and then we did a quick, a quick version of Spiro's lyrics there. That yeah, it's good. Naughty, you're left the band, they got the studio moved to Devonport and um, we got Sterlo so we took Sterlo up to the studio in Devonport just recently and, and uh, fuck me, Devonport. The guy's dog's over, see what happens. 
you know, we choose to record it suburbia, you get back to our roots and look what happens to us because we're sitting outside like Porsche monkeys. I wasn't really involved in the writing of the lyrics for Dirge because um, because there was so the other old. singer at the making of the this CD. Um, but yeah, I obviously did the retracking of the vocals, but not really involved in the lyrics for that. Still in the new music. Sterling writes lyrics on stage. He scares us. He says, I've got lyrics, guys. Well, what are they about? I don't know. <laughs> but that is true. Sometimes <laughs> I do that. Relationships between the members of the band were not going too well. Um, at one point, for instance, Ben Knight broke Alex Maloney's leg in a bar fight when they were injecting. I mean, that's where it really started to fall apart. Oh, that I do remember. I was tripping hard from the injecting. And I thought he was dissing my missus. So I was acting like a twig. <laughs> Is he actually pissed off? I don't know. You can't tell with him as a. He probably is. I remember vividly a turning point in my life where I woke up one morning absolutely strung out, had needles hanging out my arm, this toilet paper hanging out the sink, and I, um, I approached the mirror and I looked and I said, Alex, you are not a man, you are an ape. And from then on, I thought, no, this is it. I'm done.
Yeah, after Power Children, I was a bit lost musically. So we formed Smokestack, a powerhouse jazz funk rock band. We mainly play RSLs, workers' clubs, halls, but mainly RSLs. It's good, you know, everyone turns up on time, there's less injecting, and we really rock hard. Yeah, I work at Big W now, um, night shift, supervisor, mind you. Yeah, over a weekend, I don't mind going to the pub, getting maggot and playing Kino. That's all there is to it, really. I actually had a bit of mild success with a band called The Valiums. We had a one hit wonder, sort of called Take It Easy, Mr. Maury. That was about it for me musically. These days, um, you know, pretty pretty quiet life. I uh, I don't stay out late. I I go home. I'm about the same. Work, go home, no girlfriend. I formed up another band, King of the Wizards, with Brendan Fisher on drums. Thought we'd try something new, something different. And uh, Brendan Fisher actually is the one who introduced me to Jared Leto. It's not a cult. That's what everybody thinks, but it's not. This is Jared Leto is in 36 to Mars. They have a commune. We all go there, we wear white and Jared Leto gets to fuck whoever he wants, but we're all in on it. And is that a picture of him behind you there? Oh, yeah. It's just a shrine. Yeah. Very beautiful man. I miss him every day. He's not dead, I just... I just... I'm... I'm just here for a week until I go back. What do I think of the uh, grunge revival? Well, better question would probably be how do you feel being directly responsible for it? The thing is, a lot of these bands we paved the way for, if not directly influenced. So it would be nice to get a little more recognition, but, you know, those are the breaks. What's it like to be in Power Child? Um, it's very powerful. <laughs> it empowers me. What kind of music do you play? Soundgarden. <laughs> Run trip off. Just found out you need to pay the sound of $50 tonight. Now for fuck's sake. Why did they tell us? Why did they just tell us? I haven't got honestly got any money. I don't have any money. I'll pay. Let me change the right songs. Look at him. Look at this. Clean. And then grungy. He's all about the image. Is that an image or a little girl? Can you get that on camera? Yeah, it's a midget. No, it looks, looks like a midget. Got, no, it's a midget. She's got business clothes. No kids yeah. wear clothes like that. Yeah. Oh, Where do you buy clothes like that? No, 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 that's no, 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 look, it's not a midget. Midgets don't swing bags. No, they're barley bags, but still, I thought it looked like a midget. This is what happens when you play it to a public bar. Big shots like us. Free place, and that's all the 
Look, more, more big coasters. He just didn't have that charisma and that presence to sort of, you know, say no or define you. Oh, hang on a second. I'm getting cold. Yep. Oh. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Yep. Yep, no worries, though. Um, we're going to have to finish this up tomorrow. Uh, Jared Leto has decided that he's going to fuck my wife tonight, so I'm going to go get ready and watch. Um, thanks. Um, D4 Don.